go. Hey, hey, we're here. We're queer. We might be drunk. Uh, there you go. You feel good. Yeah, good to be here. Beautiful. 75 degrees in New York so City. So nice. I love this shit, man. Very nice. I don't mind when it's cold here, though. No one complains about the winter. I kind of like the winter. Too. Love the winter. You, you throw in a big jacket. It's kind of fun. Love a jacket. Yeah. But this time you get the, uh, I mean, my neighborhood is just yoga pant city. I love that. It's pretty great. But when you have the jacket, you don't have to think about what you're wearing as much. True. And I kind of like that. It, it cuts down on the get ready time. Definitely. And you feel like you take on the world in a, in a big jacket. Yeah. I love a good jacket. Love a big, not, but I hate a fucking, like one of those. No. Oh, that's, growing up, that's all I had. My parents remind me, of, that was like the style back then too. Every yeah. jacket was like puffy. Yes. New York, you probably didn't even have big jackets growing up in New Orleans. Didn't even own one. I had to buy one here. That's crazy. We had like, I mean, I remember like, you remember the blizzard of 96 and shit oh, here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd have these big puffy jackets. Anyway, you looked like, uh, geez, pull up the Maggie Simpson on the, oh, on the Simpsons yeah. and the big red. You just looked ridiculous. Yeah, like Missy Elliott, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I hated the big jacket. There, that's, you what, that's what it looked like, thing. dude. Yeah. Like Christmas story. <laughs> yeah. Hate the big jacket. But yeah, this weather's fucking cool, man. Yeah. And the yoga pants. Doesn't matter your ass. You got a great ass. That's true. Yeah. It, it, it just, it, it'll take like a B minus to an A minus. That's a great point. It saves the ass. And some of them have like a weird thing at the bottom that like accents the cheek. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing, but uh, keep on doing it there, Lulu. Lemon. Yeah. It's been great for, great for the ass. Lulu, it's, the origin story is that he was doing it to make fun of Asians. That's what I heard. Right? That's, that's. The... I think it was debunked. Is it? I, think I don't think. Look it up. Look at that third one. Go up top. No, no, no. The left. Yeah, the third one. Look at that accent. I believe this is padding. Yeah. Okay, maybe padding. But see that, that darker line at the bottom. You want to see an accent? Get an Asian person. To... No. Okay. No. <laughs> Roo <Roo-roo>. roo. <laughs> yeah. Um, boy, a lot to talk about. Saw a face in the crowd off of your guy's wreck. Ilya I feel Kazan. Like, I feel like we all have pretty good movie taste. Of course. That's a cl- Ilya Kazan. We played that clip. Uh with uh Dorosa and Chrissy here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not a good guy. Great fucking filmmaker. I mean, on the waterfront, east of Eden, uh streetcar named Desire. That's a great one, yeah. Is there a death of a salesman? What am I talking about? Streetcar named Desire. Yeah. You nailed yeah. it. But uh yeah, facing the crowd is like, man, and it's one of those movies that it, it feels so relevant. Yes. Like when you rewatch Network and you're like, fuck, this is always, this type of cynicism is always going to be around. They say it yeah. parallels the rise of Trump as well, like the populist oh, candidate. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, for yeah. sure. Totally. But the media stuff is so similar to now. We haven't evolved that. We have podcasts and we have uh, Instagram and social media, but it still works somehow. It's so good. Yeah, and it's young Walter Matthau in that yes, movie. Yes, oh, that guy just always fucking delivered too. Always great, but I mean, uh, uh, Andy Griffith, unreal. That, that he deserved an Oscar for that. I know it was crazy, and it's uh, yeah, it's one of those movies that I feel like people sleep on. There's two. I th- I don't know. I think Billy Wilder did the other one. It was a face in the crowd, and then the other one was uh, Ace in the Hole. Ooh, oh, I don't think I've seen which that. Which is kind of it's kind of a similar message. Oh, I gotta watch that. that. Uh, not a similar message, but like kind of like how fucked up uh, <laughs> this guy is and what Oops. journalism is. Oh, really? It's, it's a great movie. Billy Wilder made that. If you like uh, A Face in the Crowd, definitely check out Ace in the Hole. It's Kirk Douglas. It's a great oh, flick. Look at okay, him. who backed the uh, first guy who got uh, outed? Oh, what's his name? Somebody wrote. Rock Hudson? No, no, no. Somebody, the, the Hollywood 10. Yeah. Yeah, he the got communism, their, you mean? The communism. He yeah. got one of them when that was all going on. He was like, this is ridiculous. The guy wrote, a he, what is it, Ben-Hur? Spartacus. Whoever oh. wrote Spartacus was in the Hollywood 10, and he said, put his name on the fucking credits. And they were like, we can't, we can't. He's blacklisted. And he's like, put it on there. So he got it on. Wow. Took some guts. What happened to the guy after? He got he got more work. Wow. So it like kind of saved him. It was at the tail end of it all. But he was like, put the guy's name on there. He wrote the fucking movie. Ace and the Whole, great fucking. De- highly recommend to both of you guys. But I, Facing the Crowd was one of those where, uh, yeah, it just shows how how far charm takes you, man. Yeah. And charm is bullshit. Charm's I a know. lie. When you meet someone, they're like, he's very charming. Is he a good person? Right, right. And it's so relevant because we've seen this with social media. People go viral. They go crazy. Yeah. They're all over the place. And then you go out to see their show and it sticks. <laughs> See them live. <laughs> God, he killed them. I mean, he was like on an 11 the whole movie. Yeah, screaming, laughing. Yeah, he's 
it's funny. It's like almost like got some Joker in it too. Yes. It's yes. really, really good. Elia. I went on an Elia Kazan wormhole after that. I was just like Googling readings from Turkey. Crazy stuff came on a donkey with a with, with a sack on it. The whole I came thing. on a I came on a donkey yeah. with a sack on it. <laughs> you've, been, yeah. you've been to Juarez, huh? <laughs> <laughs> guys, who, guys who were fighting over a cum joke, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, that was like the age in Hollywood where all these great directors uh, they they just came to America. Like there was a quote in the Orson Welles book about uh, I think it was Fritz Lang who was you know made so many great movies, but. I think it was I was pretty sure. Look it up for sure. I think it's Fritz Lang, Orson Welles, Fritz Lang. But he uh, he said to Goebbels, he, Goebbels like you should be like you know our kind of not you know minister of propaganda. You should be our yeah. Our, you should make our movies basically. Mm. And he was like, but I'm Jewish. Ah. And, he, and he goes, I decide who's Jewish. Whoa! And, and Fritz Lang goes, it was that point that I realized I should leave Germany. <laughs> came to America. Wow! Made the big heat, which is like. A top five noir for me ever. That's a fucking banger. Have you never seen that one? I decide who's Jewish. I decide who is a Jew. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. It's kind of like make or break, like with cancel stuff. Like, I decide if you'll be all right, you know? I've, you can see, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example of, like, a Chris Brown, who, you know, what I think did worse than Louie, but somehow he's allowed to be okay. Right. So, like, we, we do kind of still do that. We pick who should be in trouble. Or there's like, you know, Diddy, what he did is so fucking Yeah. Gross. It's so funny that uh, I saw, what's his name, uh, Mayor Adams was like, we're going to take away his key to the city. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, hit him where it hurts. Right. Yeah, yeah. No more, no more fake key? <laughs> That's got to hurt. So yeah. I heard a theory about the tape that was leaked. The, yeah. the video and the The video of him beating up his wife, yeah. Cassie. Um, the theory is, well, he, he actually paid for that tape. He went to security and said, Fifty thousand dollars. I want that tape, mm. and they did it. So it's been since 2016. Was that like eight years? No one's seen the, this. The statue ran out. Is that why? No, that's what I thought. But they said, "Well, there's only one copy of this tape, and Diddy has it." But the feds raided his homes uh-huh. and got all of his uh-huh. shit. And so people are saying, "Oh, well, they really don't have anything on the sex trafficking stuff." But let's dirty him up a little bit and release this tape. Uh Interesting. Well, it's nice to have something concrete because we all he keep hearing like Bieber this, yes. uh, Meek Mill that, and, and he goes to an island. It's all up in the air, and then you get the tape, and you're like, we got some. What and that's wrong? why they would release that to say, oh, look, we weren't so wrong about this guy. Yeah. He is bad. There you yeah. go. And uh, it's weird how it happens though. Like, who, so they paid fifty grand. Who do they pay? Just some guy with security the footage? Yeah, probably the security guard. I don't know. Is it one person? Is it the? Ho- it's definitely not the hotel chain. They wouldn't be that stupid. Right. Yeah. Inter- it, I think it was the Intercontinental in L.A. Oh, mm. ooh. They wouldn't be. I know that was my first thought. I'm like, I'll never stay at the hotel. And I was like, I kind of like it. Nice. Very nice place. <laughs> they got. They got a. The one in Chicago has got that Olympic pool. <laughs> Do you see that towel he had? That was a fucked <laughs> towel. <laughs> nice that towel. really stayed on, didn't it? It really did. That, yeah. You know what? I'll tell you this. A, a, a fluffy towel, it, not just is that erect, but a fucking thin towel, such a pee. Ah, I, hate I a said towel, towel. You know what I meant? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I used to live with a guy named Powley. <laughs> oh yeah, Jonathan <laughs> Powley. Pow- but uh, Towley, yeah, <laughs> Towley. <laughs> South Park. The, the the thin towel. There's nothing worse because yeah. you get out of the shower, especially in the winter when it's kind of cold, and you, and you just have a thin. It's nothing. Yeah, you get Lord nothing. Blood. Yeah, yeah. He almost made it to the elevator with that lady. That would have been a little Ray Rice. <laughs> We've we've sampled before. That's another maybe, hit. Maybe this is the angle. It's a, a, you want a towel to be like the opposite of a condom. Oh, the thicker, the worse. Yes, I right? like it. I like nah, it. It's nothing. That's something. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. That's I'm tweet. terrible. We love you. Tweet we still it. love you. <laughs> Man, he killed that. But Ray, yeah, the Ray Rice one. Was, Woo! Wild. That CCTV. was pretty. Is this one worse though? I mean, he drags her back to the room. It's so fucking bad. So bad. And he did a towel. And did you see the the later footage where he throws a vase at her? Oof! I didn't see that. Oh, the vase is bad. It's a glass vase, and he just he's sitting down. And he throws it at her. Vase oh, in the crowd. Face a vase in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up the vase. Um. But yeah, that was a wild video. But yeah, it's nice to have something concrete. Enough with the rumors. Yeah. Have you seen this? Uh, kind of like OJ with the T-shirts. They got him on the merch, not the not the uh, murder. They interviewed Cameron. Oh, I saw that on CNN. Yeah, he, he he did what uh, Mark and I do on 
<laughs> on these types of shows. Mm. Did you see this? Mm-mm. He just go to the end of it. The end of it's where it's really funny when he just starts fucking with okay. it. This is a world's colliding right here. CNN and Cameron. Cameron's, he always trolls. Uh, oh. He went on O'Reilly and fucked with O'Reilly. Oh, really? Cameron's really funny. Really? He's really funny. Uh, do I know? What's a hit? What's a Cameron oh, hit? Oh, welcome hey, to Ma. New York City. Oh, yeah. Welcome to New York City. Oh, you've heard. Okay. Boy. Oh, boy. Oh, that's Cameron's him? Cameron's fucking awesome. Wow, that's big. Hey, Ma. And he, he came on my sports show back in the day on... um. On MSG, mm-hmm. he was a great guest. Really, he was. Uh, thank God he didn't do this sh- shit to me. Because what are you gonna do? Yeah, he uh, he was so knowledgeable about basketball, and he was so fucking cool. He was just like he he played along when I got a joke, and he'd make jokes. He was he was killer. Wow, I love that. But he did not <laughs> he did not play this shit. Did you any of that traffic no, go, go deeper. Go further along. Did you recognize that? So she asked when, when he plugs when he plugs his uh his oh his booty juice stuff, or whatever his yeah dick juice yeah. that's the best part okay right? I was this this line I really like she's like do you recognize that puff daddy when you saw that you saw in the video he's like I mean I saw him it's him I recognized him <laughs> I was like no it's not what I meant he's a yeah. funny guy I've seen them. What do you mean? My <laughs> what you see in the sunglasses and the bucket hat? Thought, you, as an I interview, you got to know you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Like this guy's phoning this in. Totally. She's a very attractive lady. This is like he's talking to the cops being interviewed by the cops about it. Oh, wow. He's giving nothing. He's not snitching Wasn't at he, all. Yeah, we played a clip of Cameron getting shot on here once. We did? Is that true? Yeah, yeah. He got shot and he was talking shit. Like, he wouldn't give the guy his car. Oh, And wow. he got shot and he was, like, still talking shit. when he, It was pretty damn wow. weird. Wow, it was like Teddy Roosevelt. Here's the thing Sam's talking about. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, is what, there... What does he have to do with this? Um, is he just a musician? Is, there... is that it? He knows Puff. Oh, okay. They both are hard yeah. guys. He's drinking. What no. they known in the industry about how Diddy treated his artists? He got the plug in. Ah. <laughs> Move the fingers out of the way so you can see the, the label. So I'm going to get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um, ah. <laughs> he said he's going to get cheeks. It's pretty good. <laughs> cheeks. Look. That's great. As guys uh, who have disrupted uh, serious programs yeah. like Mark and myself, He's crushing this. Crushing it. I mean, to say cheeks, because it's like you kind of can't censor that. You can't get mad, but it's like he's talking about fucking. Sure. Well, this this begs the question. Next time we do the morning stuff, we got to bring the bottle of Bodega. Ooh. Oh, on. drink on live TV. Yeah, just hit the bottle. There's something else at the end, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, where, where they, where they, where the part where she ends the interview is always, it's, that's the moment where you know you got it. Yeah. I mean, so many people have pointed out that Diddy couldn't get away with this stuff if there weren't a lot of people protecting him. Do you think that's the case? Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'll be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? Ah. I didn't know this was a Diddy <laughs> joint that I was inviting me to. Yo, who, yo, who booked me for this joint? Ah. Oh, right. wow, and I'll be Cameron. sitting around watching Diddy and all that. Yeah, thanks. Man, come on, man. Thanks for crazy, joining man. us. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, yeah yo, thank, yo, thank you for having me. You and- <laughs> <laughs> Polite at the end. I love, I love this. Cameron. <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> Stop it, Cameron. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, this is great. I mean, he's never saw that. Didn't pull it up. Look, pull the camera on getting shot. Uh, okay. video. Yeah, please. He dude, he's fucking great. And he's like a New York. He's a good basketball player, too. New York guy. Yeah. New York Harlem guy. Oh, nice. Played ball. Good enough to play college for sure. Wow. But, Man. uh, yeah, That's... Cameron, come on the pod, please. We'd love to have you. Definitely. His pod's huge. Oh, really? We'll yeah. drink the, the dick juice and get some cheeks. Oh. I love it. Hell yeah. I want to try this dick juice. And, and maybe it's not on there. Who knows? All right. I'll, I'll try it too. Yeah, wow. they, say that, they say the dick pill stuff is so bad for your heart. Yes. And well, then it's like, who's taking it? A lot of it's like people who are, who are older, older or overweight. Yes. And when you're fucking, the heart rate goes up. So now you got the heart pill with the heart rate and you're not fit. Look at look at Keith. He had a stroke. Yeah. He blames dick pills. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. the most depressing lawsuit ever. <laughs> you have to cane your way into the courtroom. Remember he said he was on a flight, and when he was about to land, he popped the Viagra. It's a great bit. <laughs> so he could go right to... Such a good bit. His special comes out in... A June 11th. June 11th. Netflix. Nice. You know... Uh, Juneteenth? We got to get him to pop back in. 
Yeah. Uh, the Cameron clip you're talking about? Yeah, but we'll give it one sec. It was, but but there's something about the dick pills too, where you're like, I forgot I was gonna say. Just yeah, just play the clip. Oh, uh, rub it for the heart. He told me to get off the car, and I looked at him like he was stupid. Pulled off, and then he started shooting. Said, As shoot. Cameron drove off in his Lamborghini sports car down this Washington D.C. street, he was shot twice in the arms. Oh my he God. was treated and released from Howard University Hospital. And tonight, after landing back here in Teterboro, he showed us the bullet Whoa. hole still clearly visible Whoa. in his left arm but he says he is okay and me i'm fine i'm excellent man it was great he's fine now, but how about at that no, moment leave it going it was great the, the end is the best part the hijacker at this dc intersection i felt disrespected because nobody's going to take a quarter million dollar car for me let alone a five cent piece of chewing gum cameron whose full name is cameron they, they hold you for the chewing gum to give him the gum him. give him the gum yeah he likes to be called a businessman from Harlem. He claims the previous violence in the hip hop world has nothing to do with this attack. It's not because of music or not anything else, but you gotta realize me and my my boys, we go hard. We got a million dollars worth of jewelry on, we got a quarter million dollars worth of cars, we candy paint everything, we like to live a luxurious life, and you got people who don't wanna see that. Yeah, you hear look- that Drake? You're soft. Well, we get the very end here. Yeah. Let's see what he has to say about Cameron. <laughs> Cameron says the hijacker definitely was after him, but he said proudly tonight he got nothing. Jim Gately, UPN 9 News. How do you stop a guy from stealing your car when he shoots you twice? You just don't get out? I mean, I what guess. do you do? I think he was shooting as he was driving off. So it was like, pop, 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 don't, you know, stop your car. And he didn't stop. So he just pop, pop, pop. Oh, don't. was his arm out of the car, I guess? No, it was glass. Uh, who knows? I Glass did. windows. Luckily, he wasn't killed. That's yeah, I know. Crazy. Jeez, twice in the arm. Yeah. I like how they have to say, uh, the Lamborghini sports car. We got it. <laughs> Lamborghini. We don't need the sports car. But, hey, good for Cam. I'm a, I'm a new fan. He's awesome. I didn't know anything about the guy. What, uh, were you on the road this weekend? I was. Oh, boy. Detroit, two shows in Royal Oak. That's a good one. Great. Although it's a music hall, which I didn't love. Yeah, I think I did that one. It's a lit. The bars in the room. It's yeah. a little big. We we sold out two of them, but it was like it was work. Yeah, you had to hammer them. And then I did Fort Wayne the next day, which was amazing. Yeah. So you never know. That's cool. But we had great times. Yeah, I did Fort Wayne once. I didn't do a theater there. I did a club there a while back. Oh, I know that club, Summit. Yeah, that's a tough room. Tough room. Well, the, the first of all, there's a couple seats that can't even see the stage, and then there's two pillars in the middle, and then so you got this shit going on. And I got heckled for about an hour there. I was actually talking to Steve, the door guy at the Comedy Cellar last night, and he was telling me a story. I guess a friend of ours played a huge venue in New York City, and he invited Steve to the show. And Outside Steve? Yeah. Oh, nice. And he invites him. If you know Steve, if you watch the show Louie, Steve's the guy that Louie shakes hands with as he's walking into the club in the intro of the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said he gave him comp tickets like horrible blocked seats ah. like he's like come see my show at this huge thing and then gave him the worst seats like he's like i couldn't even he's like i want a gun oh. wow it, was, it made me think like when i give comps to friends i don't know where the fuck they're sitting i assume they're getting good seats i always say like make sure they're getting good seats but I, we don't know yeah that's true i've been giving seats away like crazy i gotta cool it really i get one dm like i can't afford your show and i go here you go i yeah. feel horrible no i know what you mean yeah um, I got some peeves if uh, please if you're ready. I, I gotta love a peeve. I'm loaded for bear, whatever that means. <laughs> Give that a goog. Where's okay. that from? Is that for shooting a bear? I think so. Okay. Did you hear this TikTok thing? The women are saying yes. Th- this is. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, but you just, no. What is it? Uh, we've actually talked about it. I think so. A woman lost in the forest. Oh, I love this. This is great. Would you rather uh, come, come across? across yeah. A bear, a donkey, or, or a, oh, or, <laughs> with cum on its back. <laughs> No, uh, a uh, gay uh, man who's hairy. <laughs> a, a bear or a man? You just say a man. Could be any man. Yeah. That's, it's a yeah. vague question. Ninety nine percent of women said the bear. Ninety nine. Crazy, Crazy to me. And I've gone. I've gone hiking with women. Like your sense of direction is not as good as you think. You might need a man there. <laughs> you know. Also, I would love to repose that question and make it a little more specific <laughs> and see what the answer would be. Would you rather run into a bear? Or a Puerto Rican man, and they'd go bear. 
Ooh. Don't stab me. <laughs> That's a good point. I'm telling you, you throw black on there, Puerto Rican, Mexican, they're, they're going to go, it's all about optics. You're they're right. going to go uh, bare every time. You're right. Mm-hmm. I saw a graffiti in my neighborhood, Hell's Kitchen. It said, if I were attacked by a bear, they wouldn't ask me what I was wearing. Wow. Mm-hmm. Might ask yeah. what you're holding. Yeah. A hot they might, dog. They might slash your throat before you could speak. <laughs> what kind of bear are we talking? That's the thing, too. That could be a black bear, but, then it, could, but it could be. <laughs> but then also, what if you said like Harvey Weinstein or a bear? You're choosing Harvey Weinstein. He can't. If you have any athletic ability, you can get away from Harvey Weinstein. That's a great point. Great point. Also, a guy could have a phone, he could have a cabin, he could have a car, he could have a, you know, like, this guy could be so helpful. I think they're trying to show us our privilege, because if they said a guy to us, we'd be like, obviously, we're choosing a guy over a fucking bear. But also, so would you. Come on. Ah, Of course. Of course. It's silly. But they got to go with it. You know, it's, it's for the camera. For the uh, yeah, so yeah. I'm sorry. What was your peeve? I didn't mean to. Cut oh no, but that's that's a good uh, good nugget there. Let's ask Rachel when she comes in. I'll, yeah. All right. Um. By the way, no, nah, never mind. I can go. I can all, go all day about the bear thing. But <laughs> peeve, I got a couple. Should I save some for the yeah. guests? Go hard. All go right. Hard. How about this one? You know, you take people out on the road. You take them out to dinner. Headliner pays. Pretty standard. Sure. I don't care for these young guns ordering a bunch of apps and then not eating them. Oh, of course. You order those apps on my dime. You're eating every goddamn oh, one of them. I, I, it's this hilarious because I <laughs> he's nodding. Are you? Are you? I'm one, an app guy. You're an app guy. Yeah, it's fine. I'm an app guy as well. I, I love ordering apps for the table, but once they know you're paying, I've been with some people who get a little carried away. Yes. And I'm like, hey, this place ain't cheap, motherfucker. You picked it, Gary Veter. <laughs> I want a little bite of this. I want a little bite of that. No, no, no little bite. No taste sample <laughs> flight of beers. No, no. You oh, eat all those nachos. Gary will send me restaurants. We'll be in like a fucking, a not expensive. We'll be in like Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I'll be like, $59 entrees. <laughs> oh. You better give me that butthole when we're done with this dinner, <laughs> yeah. motherfucker. Assume the position, <laughs> you twink. <laughs> this happens. I mean, I gave James Webb, our buddy, a lot of shit for this. Because we were, we were on the road once at like a nice Mexican place. He's like, Order me two burritos. I'm like, they're fucking this big. What? You're not going to eat two. And he's like, all right. I, he, he agreed. He's like, all right, I won't. Gee. But it was like they were getting carried away with yeah. the meals. And I'm I'm an app guy, too. I'm down for the. Sure. I, I think. Let's party. I think it's like something about the family style of being out with your boys. Yes. It's like It is kind of fun. You're all sharing. I, totally. Like, like Chinese food with your buddies, you know? Yeah, it's great. Family style, a little kung pao, a little poo poo, but I don't like this idea that they're out with the king, so we must dine and feast on the on the meatballs, the chicken wings, the nachos, the pot stickers, the dumplings. By the way, it doesn't sound like he was at the fanciest place that he's complaining about. <laughs> Extra wings, you motherfucker. <laughs> it was chilies. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean, though, when you're at, because like, I feel like we were pretty cautious yeah, about it when we were out. I would I'm, never order an app if I was with a headliner. I, unless they brought it up. Nah, I mean, I don't give it. If, if it's my crew, I don't give a shit. But also, it's, I know what you mean when, when more and more people start coming out. Yes, yes. They bring a friend. Then you got the sound guy, the video it guy. Adds it adds it up. It adds up. It adds up. This is how athletes go broke. Exactly. The entourages. The entourage. You hear that camera on? <laughs> So, yeah, I'm okay with ordering it as long as you eat it. I don't like just the idea of this willy-nilly, like, give it, give us all everything. Here we are. We're out to dine. Like I know what you mean. Louis the Fourteenth or something. So I got a little dating advice from my dad. Very little advice in general, but a little dating advice. And yeah. it, one of them was... Wear a Hawaiian with a, shirt? <laughs> no, <laughs> never wear. Uh, so his advice was, if you're on a date with a girl, you just look at the menu and you look at the waiter and say, I'll, I'll order the wheel. That means every appetizer. The wheel. Yeah. Mm, and that usually impresses a girl. Okay. Or it's or, gay Or Gary Veter. <laughs> I'll have the wheel. He's like, oh, dearie me. <laughs> the we- so you have everything? Every appetizer. Why is it called the wheel? I'll just take everything. I don't know. That's what my dad like said. Wheel probably something from the 50s. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, this, bad your, your dad's dating advice goes exactly against what Mark is annoyed by. Well, well he's talking about lady. openers. I'm talking about openers. Ah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, if you're trying to get laid, get the wheel of yeah. fortune Jeez. or whatever. You don't whatever. want to eat that much if you're trying to get laid. Uh, you don't want to be too full. It's a flex, though, as the kids say. Hey, look at this, lady. I can take care of you. I can provide. Every meal, every food is on the on the table. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Do you guys ever get dating advice from your fathers? 
Hmm. No. Wrap it up. <laughs> I got a lot of that. Put out. Yeah. <laughs> Watch they out. Put, give it up. Yeah. Pull uh, out. Pull out. Don't that was, hit her. That was from my biological father. He's like, make oh. sure you pull out. It's a bad, uh, <laughs> don't. Let me see if I got. I wrote some peeve. I always write down some. Uh, peeve. Yeah, I got more too. Oh, I got. I got a. All right. I don't go. know which ones I should save because I. I know. You write down so many, and the thing is with jokes and peeves, I, I forget which ones I'm repeating sometimes. So you guys hopefully can help. Uh, and we have a guy coming up in a few episodes who is. I want to throw some peeves at because he gets all worked up. Who Sal? Quinn. Quinn. Oh yeah. That, well, this that's going to come out before this one. Oh, okay. Well, I'll save. We're backlogging because we're both going out on the road. Okay. Um, okay, I got to peeve. People who act, they want to act busy, but they're not doing shit. Hmm. Sometimes it's people we work with. They'll be like, they'll be like, all right, let's hop on a call. We're like, nope. All the things I need are, are written in text and an email to you. They're like, all right, two p.m. We'll all uh, discuss this. I'm like, uh, there's nothing to discuss. Oh, I hate the discuss. We're doing the. We got the stuff. We got it. I hate a call that we don't need to do a call. Mark and I. It's funny whenever we're like working on stuff. Mark and I just want to avoid any any long, contact. Yeah, I get stressed out by a long text. Oh, same. What? I don't read them. I just go, ah, and I throw my phone. I, I hate a long text, but we were, we were doing something with the movie, I think it was. I don't know if it was movie or like whiskey. Or the I don't even know. Yeah, but you guys, we, the text came in. You guys have time to hop on a call. And then I got a side text from you going, do we need a call about everything? And I was like, <laughs> I know. I was thinking the exact same thing. I don't. I want to just text sometimes. Well, the thing about the call is, it's so much more than a call. It's like you got to be alone. You got to be in a quiet area. You got to be kind of stationary to have a call. And then the call turns into a Zoom. Ah, uh, not just audio. Now we want to look at you. Sooner call. or later, you're going to be spooning me. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> the call is a gateway to to the Zoom. The anal. Yes, <laughs> that's where it's going to go. The Zoom is always hate the Zoom. We we had one for. The key art on my special. Like, can we hop key on a call? Art. I'm like, I got to do a call about the key art? <laughs> I told you what I want. <laughs> what do you mean? B. Diddy. No more key art. We're taking that too. <laughs> the key and the key art. <laughs> what is key art? Is that just the main photo? Yeah, it's just yes. the one they use that you click on. Oh, uh, I see. So you want it to look cool. And I thought, actually, they killed it. They did a great job. I love what they did. But it, but I was like, we could have gotten this. Of course. Just like, give it a, a thumbs up on the photo, on the text. But what, what I think what happens is they're probably paying like an ad company to do it for them. Mm. And the more rounds probably cost them more. So that's probably why they want to hop in a call. But I'm like, I'm pretty simple. Simple yeah. text. Yeah. And I will say there's the other side of this where he, I avoided everything. Like a friend of ours, he shot a special and he, you know, it's hard to watch a special. You got to edit it. It's oh, brutal. Heck. And he's like, just, just edit it. I can't even watch it. And then it came out and he watched it and he's like, this is all wrong. But it was already out. Who was it? I don't want to say. <laughs> All right. You can bleep that. Bleep that. But <laughs> he was <laughs> like, I hate the way it came out. I hate the way it looks. I hate the, the pacing, this and that. And he was like, I should have watched. Damn. So it can fuck you. But obviously there's there's limits. You On know, the flip side of that, greater. some guys are spending 90 hours, I've heard, uh, editing one hour of special. They yeah. sit in a room for 90 hours with the editor. See, that's overkill as well. It's, it's, tough to, it's tough to look at yourself. It's really it's frustrating. It loses it's, all humor. Well, not only that, yeah, you start to hate. You, and by the way, you probably hate the jokes a few minutes, a few months before you totally tape. Uh, so then when you're rewatching, you're like, oh, at least you're removed from it a little at that point. But then you kind of start to you're like, all right, these are kind of fun. Now that I'm like removed from it, I don't hate them as much. Yes. I haven't told them in a while, so I don't hate them as much. But then you start watching again. Then you start to fucking hate them again. And uh, yeah. I, I mean, I have such a such a peeve when I'm rewatching it and the same mistake. You have to keep it oh, the same. I yeah. go nuts, but uh, maybe that's good. Like your kids turn 18, you start to hate them to push them out. Yeah, uh -huh. that's the, just the natural progression of pushing your jokes out. Like you're out in the world now, and I don't want to see you anymore. I'll never see you again. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> and 80s comics, their kids never left. They did those <laughs> jokes forever. Those kids are staying in the basement for. Well, well, you never see them again except for when you're in a jam. When you're in a bad situation, you're like, you're like, kids, I need you. Yeah, it's like a corporate gig. I'm in a bad one. Corporate gig, you're like, let me pull out my kid. Because <laughs> you're desperate. That's your jam. Dude, the, the cellar last night was fucking Pop. rocking, dude. So I'm on a show. The lineup was it was Chrissy D, Louis C.K., Shane. I'm, I'm on. Jesus it was fun. Uh, every Everyone on there was murdering. It was so fun. Wow. Then you were on a show with Michelle Wolf pops Wolf, in. Wolf, Shane. Kumail, Kumail was on Mail, one of them. Nanjiani. These are all headlines. These are all like Huge. theater or we'll arena comics. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, um, Kumail. Hey, 
Hey, get How in are here, you? buddy. Today's sponsor, Cuts T-shirts are high quality, wrinkle-free, and buttery soft. I love these shirts. If you watch the pod, you see me wearing them all the time. These uh, sweatshirts are killer. I love that they don't wrinkle, because you know me, I'm a slob. I, I throw stuff in a bag, and it, it, you don't have time to iron it before the show. Their stuff is comfy, uh, but you look good. I mean, they're kind of fitted. They, they, I always get compliments on these shirts. Norman was like, dude, you look awesome in these. Where do you get these? He's wearing them all the time now. Gary Veter on my tour, we're all, we're all rocking cuts. You need at least one nice shirt for a family function. Make it cuts. Uh, they're ridiculously soft, they're breathable. They don't wrinkle. As I said, they look way more expensive than they actually are. Built to last, you'll be enjoying your favorite shirts and pants for years to come. Embrace the summer state of mind with cuts. For a limited time, drunk listeners get 20% off your entire order when you use code DRUNK at checkout. That's 20% off your order at CutsClothing.com with promo code DRUNK. Support the show and tell them we sent you. Experience the perfect blend of style and comfort with Cuts Clothing. What's up, buddy? Good Good to see see you. Coast to coast. That's your oh, mic. Amazing. I almost yeah. wore that shirt. What a coincidence! Yeah. It's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Oh, thank hey, you. Brought man. your own, your own brew, huh? Yeah. Oh, Mountain Dew. No, I. I <laughs> are you drinking Mountain Dew? <laughs> no, that's just to wash the other stuff down. What? Yeah. You chaser. Oh yeah. You've never heard the saying Yahoo Mountain Dew? No, no. I've heard. Oh yeah. I heard it's you. a hillbilly drink. Oh, okay. They used to say Yahoo Mountain Dew, and then they'd shoot their cousin. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a After weird sex? early, one of the early slogans of advertising. Interesting. Yahoo Mountain Dew, and then... Oh, <laughs> See, and then they'd wow. shoot their cousin. I didn't yeah. know Mountain Dew was a redneck drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Joe yeah. List drinks it. <laughs> I thought it was yeah. white trash. I didn't know it was full-on hillbilly. It's neither. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Should we, uh, we got IPAs for you. Should we? Yeah, what, did you get my favorite one? We couldn't oh, find them. Yeah, what's this one? We got the brand, though. Sci-fi, yeah, that's the one. Sci-Fi Hamster Wheel? Yeah, that's it. That's my drink. Sounds like one of your albums. <laughs> it is. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, sir. Me and Jimi been... Hendrix partied to um, a can of this at uh, Woodstock. Oh, gee, how old are you? <laughs> you know, when you puke, you got to go sideways. <laughs> yeah. Put the ground on it. <laughs> Yo, was that real? The puking, choking with Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, yeah, that's what I heard. I don't know, what man, this is fucking good. Isn't oh. it great? Yeah, that's the best. Oh, that's rich. Yeah, that's it's good. good on a raft. You guys ever float on a raft uh, in a lake? I, nah. I've done it in a river. Yeah, so you know. Oh, cheers. Yeah. How do you think? I Are got you a, yeah, cheers, cheers for fears, bro, Stuffy? I'm cheers. <laughs> yeah, we used to uh, a tube down the Bogachita in Louisiana. No way you have fallopian tube? <laughs> wow, my guy. Long story. They're tied now. Are they? Yeah, yeah. No more. To what? Uh, <laughs> a pole in the backyard. Wow. Play tetherball with it. Lord, love a leprechaun. We were just talk. We talk about something about Mary and Dumb and Dumber. Oh yeah, an, an unhealthy amount probably. No, we love them both. And you're. I mean, Dang. it's crazy that you're in both of 
two of the greatest comedies of all time. Oh, right? oh thanks. Back yeah, your career was thriving. Uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was rocking and rolling. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was an honor to be in them, man. It was. It was a pleasure. Yeah. How are those uh, Fairly Brothers? Are they cool guys? Oh yeah, they're the. I think they're some of the nicest guys I've ever worked with. Really? Yep. They, they, you'd go on their set and. Uh, they'd make the the guy the handyman who was working on the trailers treat them the same as they'd treat the a-list stars wow. like just just total respect for just people humans in general you know and it was yeah. just really it was such a nice kind of tone they sat you know and just told me everything i needed to know about them so i love right it. yeah did you audition for the dumb and dumber <laughs> thing or did they tap you or what happened uh yes and no i I went in, I, I had never um, acted, I'd never been in a movie, and uh, I, I, uh, Jim Carrey asked them to see me, uh, asked them to see me, and so I went in. Oh, wow, fellow Canuck. Yeah, yeah, and I went into their office, and, uh, you know, the movie was called Dumb and Dumber, and uh, I sat down on a couch, and they were sitting there, and they're like, hey, how you doing, Harlan? And I'm like, great how are you? And they're like, okay, did you ready? Did you bring the script? And I, I went, what script? Uh, like, I didn't know about auditioning for a movie. And they just looked at each other and they just looked and they went, this is our guy. Uh, <laughs> like Peter said, this is our guy. I was actually in the running for the, the co-lead at one point. No way. Oh yeah. Cause yep, they yep. thought I was that dumb. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. So I, I went through the auditioning process and uh, I read with Jim several times, and then I remember on the last day it was me and Jeff sitting in the Whoa. in the lobby in the in the auditioning room waiting to go in. And Whoa. I'd never acted. I'm looking over it. There's this guy who's been nominated for Oscars and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just went, Whoa. I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> and I went to Jeff, but the the guys they were so cool. They they said, Hey, do you want to do this this other part, the cop? And I was like, you don't owe me anything. I'd, I'd be honored. So that's, that's, they just offered me the cop oh, part. Yeah. Oh, man. That was really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Cause what a funny movie, funny guy. <laughs> I feels like, uh, directors don't do that anymore. They're like, we need a name. We need a, yeah. Shalamu. And you're like, no, get the funny guy for the funny part. Yeah. You'll go to a comedy now and it'll, <laughs> excuse me, it'll be a, a rapper or a wrestler right. or like get a comedian yes. for the funny role put the rapper and the wrestling guy in the wrestling and rapper role exactly right? come could, on yeah well you know Jeez. if you're trans you got to play a trans part maybe a funny guy should play a funny part right See? Uh, you're onto something aha uh -huh. there you go well i think that's why the roast of tom brady did so well it was a bunch of comedians it was like working comedians like kevin hart yeah Laura, but it was also that's going against Nikki. it too they got a bunch of football players too well that's true because it's it's a football roast but I think when you book, you know, sometimes they'll book like Seth Rogen, and you're like, look, hey, he's a funny actor, but he doesn't know how to zing. Yeah, okay, Hello okay. Canadian. Yeah, I think he did stand up for he a while, though. Oh, you're right. I think Bad early example. on he did stand up, but... Will Ferrell? Oh, he's the funniest. He's Will, funny can, Will can you're, do anything. You're making some dangerous enemies here. Will what the hell are you doing? I'm saying they're funny, but they're not. he's not a stand-up. No, I mean, Will, Will, Will can, Will's done a little bit of that, but Will's... Will's the funniest. He can do anything, anytime, anywhere. I've worked with Will. I've been friends with Will. He he's like, boom. He's yeah. Will's oh, he Will's in fun. the upper echelons in my yeah. book. No question. Oh yeah, I agree. I'm a fan. Yeah, he's he's a killer man. He, he, look at any appearance he's done. He just adjusts yep. to the comedy moment and he destroys it. Even on on the roast. You know, the Tom Brady roast, he annihilated oh, he it, you know? Too, wasn't he? Yeah, he annihilated uh, it. I take it all back. Well, we tried to get him, but he said no. So yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, love a lemon meringue pie bush. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, well, just saying, like Greg Kinnear famously said, Yeah. I tried stand-up, I couldn't do it, so I went to acting, and he won an Oscar. Wow. So there you go. Did he, he was nominated. I don't think he won, did he? I thought he won for something. He won. As uh, good as good it as gets. gets. Yeah. Nominated, Jinx. I think. Jinx. Do me some Coke. <laughs> what is it? Huh? Buy you a Coke? Coke? Buy you a Coke? You ever heard of that? Might be an American thing. What about a Mountain Dew? Yeah. Uh, could you have any cousins you want dead? <laughs> sure. Yeah, who? <laughs> Mountain Dew. I don't want Dew. one of those girls to talk. Whoa. Power okay, drop. Ten minutes in and he drops a power slam.
Uh, what did he win? It looks like best supporting, best actress, and best actor, and best picture. Is that possible? Best no. picture. Wow. The whole movie, yeah, the whole yeah. Helen Hunt won. I did say one. Hunt and, and Nicholson and, and Nicholson. Nicholson. He didn't win. I don't think. I think he was nominated. Cuba Gooding Jr. was oh, in it. Yeah, he was the gay guy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that. a fun fucking movie. Great dude. movie. Yeah. That's like a good holiday. It's like a feel good. Yeah, we yeah. Watch. How about uh, Helen Hunt in the uh, the rain? Yeah. What nips. do you mean? Uh, wet Some t-shirt nips, yeah. at the end. Sure. Pull it up. Uh, okay. You know what? I don't find her as sexy, though. So really? I'm going to pad. Let's not pull it up. How about uh, that? Can we not pull it Mark up? Mark and I would like to up. see the nipples. Can we not wreck the show? Look away while we yeah. All right. the uh, Helen Wait, Hunt. What do I, can't Tommy yeah, Lee I don't want to see. Oh, how, how did we say nipples and you say Tommy Lee Jones? <laughs> <laughs> pull up his nipples, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, he won for best supporting actor that year. For what? Uh, the Fugitive. Kinnear? Tommy no, Lee Jones? Tommy oh, Lee Jones, geez, 94. All over the place. That's not the same year as as good as it gets. That's Okay, hold on. Four. Oh, I was thinking of Tommy Lee Anderson, the drummer. <laughs> uh, oh. Who's that guy? He took her name? Wait, was he in a, was he in a movie? No. Tommy well, Lee Jones? Porn. Yeah. Isn't he the drummer for Iron Maiden or something? No. Motley uh, Crue. Probably. Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. Oh, it's just Tommy Lee. Yeah, he's there's a, no Jones. He's Anderson. Yeah. He's Tommy Lee Anderson. Okay. There you go. Hey, there's old Jack. We're all out of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that the scene? Carol I guess that's wet t shirt, Helen Hunt. Yes. Is that what you asked for? Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Her mouth is crooked. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, we got it. As a, as a 14 year old, that was exciting. That was pretty cool. That was yeah. as good as it gets. Hey. <laughs> Do you want to hear my crazy Jack Nicholson story? Yes! I'd love to. So I was at the, I was a buddy of mine invited me to the uh, Lakers game. This was probably, I don't know, 15 years ago. Oh, are you a b ball fan? No, I, 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 I don't like basketball because oh, I grew up playing hockey. I'm Canadian. So we didn't even have a team when I was growing up. The Raptors came like way after I left. Sure. But um, we were at the game and we, were, we had really good seats and we we're sitting across from Nicholson. Uh huh. And my buddy got good VIP seats. And at the ha- is it the halftime at yeah. basketball? Yep. That we went to a VIP area, and Nicholson was there. And there's like a little area with food and stuff. And then there was a separate private bathroom. So, <laughs> so I go over to the bathroom area, and uh, there's a little area where you can wait. There's like two stalls, and Jack was standing there by himself eating a piece of black forest cake. You know the oh yeah chocolate cake with the whipped cream and the cherries. Love it. Have you ever been to the Black Forest in Stuttgart in southern Germany? I go with the White Forest. Father? <laughs> so Jack's like scarfing down his uh, his Black Forest cake on a you know paper plate with a plastic spoon, puts it down, goes into the, I go, you're next. He goes, yeah, I'm going in next. And he, he goes in, and while he was in there, I noticed he left his plate and his spoon, but there was still a bunch of like gunk on the spoon. Uh, like like, like black forest, like he didn't clean it off. Interesting. And I went, holy smokes, what's better than an autograph but DNA? <laughs> <laughs> so I pocketed the spoon and I got one of those like shadow boxes, you know, the little boxes you can put things in like yes, metals. And yes. So I kept the ticket stub and the spoon with the gunk in it and I put it, I've got it in my office, a shadow box with Jack Nicholson's DNA wow. on the, isn't that cool? Might look like a stool yeah. sample yeah. You know, over time. <laughs> no, it's still. I mean, that you know, whipped cream. It never fades. It's That's made out true. of more chemicals than your sister's legs. <laughs> <laughs> kind of cool and kind of serial killery at the same a time. Yeah, right. Yeah. But who's laughing when I make an army of Jack Nicholsons oh. when the apocalypse happens? Ooh, you got the stem cells, <laughs> right? And then I'm surrounded yeah. by Jacks and anyone who wants to mess with me. You want to fuck with him? You go through me, <laughs> right? And I live. You guys get eaten alive by cannibals, whores and sweet and sour Chinese recipe <laughs> makers. Well, if yeah. you've got 20 jacks in your house, you better get a lot of cocaine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And a lot of chicks. Yeah. And a lot of porn that stars. fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge dong, apparently. Yeah? Who? Jack. Really? How do you know? I, I heard a <laughs> porn star on Howard Stern talking about banging him. No. Pull it up. <laughs> Pull it out. God. <laughs> wow. Uh, is that true? Yeah. I mean, I was a little kid, and I was rubbing one out, so I was a little off, you know, a little wonky, but that's what she said. Really wonky. God. <laughs> uh, well, you're the one with the chocolate <laughs> at the house. 
So it's framed in your office? It's framed in a shadow box oh, with the I love ticket. That. And then I put the date and everything. Yeah, so it's just, it's still there, like preserved, like it just gunked, it calcified right to the plastic. Wow. Yeah, so I've got his DNA ready to rock and roll. I love the guy on the phone. Yeah, we got a couple shadow boxes here. What do you need it for? Well, I uh, got some gunk off of Nicholson's tongue. Yeah. It's still in the concave, like, part of the spoon. Wow. You, you ran in the in bathroom there. after him, you grabbed the urinal cake, you're like, I'm going to put this. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, there's another shadow box with a log in it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, don't ever watch him fuck, he'll take that condom. Whoa, power drop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jumping, Jeremiah. Are you a, you're a huge Nichols and fan, I'm guessing. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not huge, but I like him. I mean, he's he's one of those rare legendary actors, sure. right? Sure. Like Clint Eastwood. or sure. they're, they're, they're all dying off. Yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's not many left. So. We got Cruz and, and Hanks, I think, left. <laughs> yeah, but they're even yeah. from a different era. Sure. Like Nicholson and Eastwood are kind of up there and then right. Hanks and it's like Hackman and Hoffman they're all kind of old yeah, yeah. amazing yeah, that's what I call you Hackman yeah that's right, <laughs> right. that's what I call you Pac-Man because you eat my sister's face every <laughs> night <laughs> I eat a fruit every now and then <laughs> What the fuck's happening? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you again. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, boy, the 90s. You had a, you had a real run. Of you were in a ton of movies, dude. Yeah, I, I can't complain, man. I I, I got I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I've been, I've been to this guy's house. <laughs> Unbelievable house. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. I don't want to oh, get into it and get yeah. your address away. but No. You earned it, and it's <laughs> that it, it. These movies really went to a good. Oh, half baked too. Oh yeah, half That's baked. Right. Yeah, there it is. Can was we... that fun? Was that a fun one to make? Yeah, that one was interesting because I didn't want to do it because it was a drug movie. You don't like drugs? I'm not huge into that, and so I, I think it was more about I didn't want to be an influence on Kid. kids to do drugs. Because interesting, and so I turned the movie down about five or six times. Wow. Yeah, I didn't. I said no to it. And then the producer, Bob Simons from Universal, s said, let me take you to lunch one last time. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So we went to a place like right down the street from my place. I met with him and he just said, what can we do to get you to do this movie? Wow. And I just said, I said, Bob, I'll tell you what, you let me improvise every line. I'll, I'll give you the line. I'll give you the lines off the script. I'm not going to be a, a prima donna or an eagle. Like, I'll give you what's on the script, but sure. let me do a take where I can improvise every every time I want to. Yeah. And he just went, done. Oh, and I said, let's do Lord. it. We've, and, I've auditioned for 38,000 movies, never gotten one. You're getting begged to be in movies. Well, this one I was. Th this scene in particular, I'll oh, let's see. there's a great story for this one involving the improv. It went on to be kind of an iconic line. I'm, I'm sitting in prison and Cheech from Cheech and Chong um pulls me up and it's says Chong, i think isn't it yeah he goes this this is my bitch yeah and that was the end of the scene and all those guys there was about 70 guys they were all extras and and when he goes this is my bitch i took a beat and my in my head i went this guy would be proud of that and i just went i'm somebody's bitch <laughs> <laughs> and the whole all the prison they just erupted it was wow. like it was like a huge like oh. you know if you did a, a killer joke at a club just exploded and we had to redo the take and we had to the, the director had to say okay nobody laugh there, it's this moment yeah, right here play oh, yeah, so we re, we reshot it Still nasty nate it's my bitch <laughs> nasty nate but you're gonna stab him it's gonna be me <laughs> got a problem with that <laughs> you better watch your back fish because school master ain't gonna be there for you all the time because next time i come for you i'm gonna want some cocktail fruit <laughs> take it i'm somebody's bitch <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. great it just the play the, the guy they just went nuts and i thought that one's gonna hit that uh, one's gonna be that's good killer See, funny guy do funny movie it's oh, very thank simple you. these yeah. hollywood cunts they ruin everything that is funny that you it's a drug movie but 
your character the entire movie is just trying not to get raped. <laughs> That's your entire part. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Well, he was also a very sort of gentle soul. He, he wasn't yes. your typical, like, druggy. I felt like he was more like just a peaceful guy and his buddies were druggies and he just went along with it, sort of. Right, so. right. But um, Can we pull up my favorite line in the whole movie where you, with the horse? Oh, okay. oh, that's my favorite that, line too. Maybe the one of the funniest lines in movie <laughs> yes. history. I've rewatched. Oh this wow, we, eight zillion times. We used to rent this movie, and we would just keep re rewatching. Yeah, this me scene. too. Me too. It was a big laugh. Now this couldn't have been improvised. If this is improvised, this woman, we got to get her on the podcast. <laughs> the horse here. You see the trouble you're getting me into? Is this all riff. Yeah, this is all. You're hungry, survival. aren't you? Here. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you like popcorn? All the pink pop Makes pop. Your teeth go pop 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 pop. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been so hungry. No, you missed the part uh -oh. we wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, with the, the girl. cop, the lady, the lady, white boy D. But that part was all improvised. The really? whole buttercup thing. It was just supposed to be bu buttercup. <laughs> and here's the, oh, here we go. Yeah. Hey, girl, you hungry? Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was talking to the horse here. <laughs> that went over so big. Oh, she even had like a, a little hit in the... Oh, fuck you. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah, that is amazing. Everything about it, the sound of her voice is Yes. Perfect. Did she have to audition for that? I, I guess she did. She was probably a local girl we sh shot that in um, <laughs> Toronto. I actually didn't like that moment because she she said, I don't like that word. Wow. The N -word. Fuck you. But that, black. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it, but but people love it. People love the word. And the interesting thing about <laughs> that's that. That's not why we're laughing. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But it, that's, I'm just saying my reaction to it, I didn't, I didn't like that because of that. It was sort of hard for me to hear, but. The beautiful thing about that scene is if you pull it up, you look at the, uh, it's in front of a pizza joint. So that's the uh, pizza joint mm. me and my buddies hung out at in high school. Whoa. Yeah. And if you, if you would have panned 20 feet to the right, you would have seen my best friend, Steve Reeves from high school sitting in my, my director chair wow. there. Wow. Yeah, we, we, we used to hang out there on Saturday night, and here I was shooting a movie in front of it. That's, That's amazing. So cool. And then this whole buttercup scene, it was just supposed to be buttercup, and I purposely kept saying the name wrong to, to milk like buttercup, butter nuts, butter stuff. Like, wow. And that turned out to be a real like popular scene. <laughs> Chips and some pink popcorn and some fucking... Yes! This horse is a diabetic! Buttercup! Buttercup! Don't you leave me! Breathe, Buttercup! Breathe! Breathe! <laughs> I drew my t-shirt. Oh, wow. You're under arrest! What? You dumb son of a bitch! No! I'm a... I'm a peaceful man! I'm a school teacher! Shut up! You're a cop killer! I love horses! I love horses! I love horses! I love butter stuff! Butter cup! <laughs> Damn it! Butter not cup! <laughs> that was that was off the cuff. Yeah, that was off. Oh, that's killer. And to that actor's credit, he was a local Canadian kid. He he was from an improv background. Oh. He, it, it wouldn't have worked if he didn't go with it. Sure. So that's half him, half me. Like he Amazing. he had the intuition to just kept like going yep. in it, and it worked. And I'll tell you one other quick story. Please. I don't want to drag well, it out. Got but, you here. Well. This is one of the only movies they ever did where Young Street, where we shot it, is one of the busy... It's sort of like the Times Square of Toronto. Okay. And so it's one of the only movies they ever did. We were out on a Saturday night on this busy street, and they roped off the sidewalk on the other side, and there was about 200 people Whoa. watching the scene, and after we do it, people would clap. It's the only movie I've ever done where it felt like we were doing stand-up because it was like a live audience while we're filming live. And it was just wow. the wildest. It was such a cool experience. And 
And that horse, they had a real horse, and then right when I pat his nose, they had a taxidermied horse. Yeah. And it fell over. And then that T-shirt I drew with Sharpies. I, <laughs> every movie I do, I try to sneak it in. I draw my own T-shirt. It's underneath. You can see it. Amazing. Yeah, but if you look at my movies, Rocket Man and a few others, I that's kind of my sneaky tri- ah. Easter egg thing. I draw my own T-shirt. And that's also, I feel like you play like a sweet, dumb guy really well. Yeah, and that for sure. Yeah, everything else, I feel like I play a real smart genius. <laughs> I always said you should have been Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> my opinion. I should have been. What's that other one with a Russell Crowe, My Special Mind? Or Beautiful, Beautiful Mind. Yeah. My Special Mind. Different yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's the shirt I drew in Rocket Man. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You should do you sell those or hang them up? I, I do them still. I have a I, well, I don't want to give a plug, but I have a plug. I have a, a website called harbling.com and I draw on t-shirts and sell the originals. Oh, that's great. Yeah, there it is. So All right. Can we well. can we go to your scene in something about Mary cuz it's such a funny. <laughs> okay. It's what, so funny. It's your show, whatever you want. Well, we t- we talk about this movie a Wonder lot. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might buy that one. <laughs> That's such a funny scene. So good. What, what? I mean, how did that? They just hit you up again and like come back for this guy? Or they just finish? called me. They just they called me for they called me for Kingpin. Wow. And they called Who me. Who even Kingpin? Well, I didn't get to do it, but they called me to play the the Amish kid, the Randy Quaid character. What? Whoa! Yeah. That could have been you. I was just sitting at home one day, and Peter. I, hello. Hey, well, Arlen, It's Peter. It. Oh my and God. I go, hey, what's up, Pete? He goes, yeah, we're doing this new movie. Want you to play the the Amish kid. I, could I said, it. great, but I, I got a sitcom at the time with me and Justin Bateman at a sitcom, uh. and I couldn't do it. So he goes, well, he goes, they must have loved me. He goes, read through the script, pick any other part, and you can do it outside of Woody's and, and the girl. And, um, and then I found the other smaller part that I wanted to do. And it was, uh, I couldn't get out of the sitcom, but it turned out to be the part Bill Murray did, where Bill oh, Murray was the... Bernie McCracken. Yeah, great so great I, character. I, great character. I missed out on, on that movie, but uh, they've been great to me. I love the oh, Farrelly brothers, oh. yeah. I mean, they made some of the best comedies ever. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Easily. Well, I, I don't want to piss them off, but I, I say, and I thank my lucky stars, I think I was in their two best, Dumb and Dumber and Something About Mary. In my, in my opinion, I, I, I like them the most. Not, not because I'm in them, but I just feel like they're... They're both classics. You know? I would agree with that because Kingpin's amazing, and so is uh, me, myself, and Irene. But these two are yeah. really just they're lights just, out, they're, and they're so quotable. I mean, I know the crazy thing about something about Mary is like it's got so many fucking funny people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Chris great. Elliott, Lee yeah. Evans, like oh, amazing. Yeah, like amazing. everyone in that movie kills it. You <laughs> yeah, know? Matt Dillon. How Unreal. funny is Matt, Dillon? Matt to me is the funniest guy in the whole movie. Same. Like yeah. the first time I watched it, I was like, okay, sort of the straight guy. But the more I watch it, I just go, he's unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. He's so funny. Yeah, and Stiller's sort of the straight guy. I mean, right. Stiller's great. You couldn't he's do amazing. it without him. But amazing. But when when they were editing the movie. The Fairleys had me come in, and I got to sit in the editing room with them, and they showed me, <coughs> excuse me, a bunch of scenes that Matt Dillon did that didn't make the cut. Oh, and I was like, guys, how can you not put th- those scenes in? Like they were hilarious. Was it yeah. the one where he squeezed her, her tits? It was oh, more yeah. about when he that meets her make- at the architectural. <coughs> um, <coughs> oh, at the museum yeah, convention the, thing. Yeah, and and um. Just hilarious footage oh. that that never made it. Yeah, he goes. Uh, you been to Galapagos twice last year. <laughs> yeah, whatever country. Santiago, made. Chile. That was it. That yeah. was it. No one's been to Santiago, Chile twice in a year. Yeah. I love when he's directing the or uh, talking about the the special needs guys, and he's like, oh, mongoloid. You know, you know, Mongo had a, a forehead like a drive-in movie theater. <laughs> it's it's a shocking scene to see because they would never allow this now, but it's so funny. I mean, so funny. We we watched this on the tour bus last year, and James just downloaded one one illegally, so it was like it had all the extra clips in and i thought they picked the right scenes to cut i was like oh shit this i don't remember this and it kind of it kind of missed but then meanwhile we did the same thing with dumb and dumber and every extra scene that was in there was fucking like a home run yeah that's why i think they're their two best because they just flow together as a comedic piece 
that everything works and one scene services the next and the stories are the most cohesive. Whereas me, myself, and Irene had some amazing standout moments. I felt like the story kind of oh, fell off. And, the but place. these these work, they keep you engaged yeah. regardless of the, 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 the zaniness or the comedy. You, you're, you're invested in them, in the story, you know? Yeah, I would say, uh, is it Landis? Like uh, Landis? Coming to America, uh, um, those movies in the 80s felt like real movies that were funny. Yeah, American Werewolf in London, yeah, John Landis. Yeah. yeah, what's the other one? Uh, Trading Places. Yeah. Like, that felt like a real movie, yeah. but it just happened to have Beverly a Hills hilarious Cop. guy. And yeah. Yes, exactly. Now comedies kind of just seem ridiculous all, all out of the gate. You're right. It's like they lost that human quality. Like, yeah. Like you really buy that Ben Stiller, like, fuck, I love this girl. Yeah. And then immediately you love him because he protects the brother. Yeah. Mm. It's so well done. I have a new one coming out that Ooh. hankers back to that, the stuff you're just talking about, where it's real world, but zany comedy injected into it. Great. I'm hoping it works. At, uh, but uh, yeah. Did you, did you shoot it or, or what do you We doing? shot it. I actually wrote it and directed it. Whoa. Yeah. So it's called Wingman. It's about a, it's about a professional wingman who helps like a loser hitch. guys get laid, but... It's sort of in the real world, but the wingman who I play also is sort of an over-the-top Austin Powers, oh, Ace Ventura type cool. character, and and it gets back to the non-woke comedy. Yeah, there, there it go. is. Wow. Yeah. Who's yeah, the guy? I even hate using the word woke, but I feel like it's just safe is what the problem is. It's like, yeah, hey. this isn't. Wingman's not. Yeah, Mark and I wrote a movie script together, and we're trying to make it, and, and we're kind of figuring out how we're going to do that now. Be fearless. Don't. Yeah! Don't That's settle. We're ne- we're never rather, you better not. It's better off to not make it than to let them squish your I heart. That's how we yeah. agree, dude. Yeah, we, and we, someone will find it. Someone will come through. The there'll be a hole in the darkness. Just don't, don't cave in, man. Because there's no point. If you're there's no point. If you're doing it for someone else's voice, then it, it it's passionless. You wh- gotta yeah, hang on to whatever you have. Like every here and there, you have to make little compromises, sure. but but don't let them tread on your overall tone and vibe of the movie agree you, you I mean, see we might be drunk comes out starring ryan gosling and paul <laughs> rudd yeah <laughs> like yeah we, we yeah. want to make it <laughs> well that's why stand-up is doing so well because no one can fuck with it you know stand-up is we're booming right now it's, everybody's doing arenas and selling uh, right. like specials i mean to make shows now you are literally losing money as a stand-up like on the road you make money to make so it's really just something you love as we want to do it because we love comedies yeah because yeah. It's, I, we probably will lose money on it or something. Maybe, but it'll be but fun to do. It'll be fun yeah. as hell to do. And uh, and that's why we got into this, to have fucking fun. And I think there's more of a, 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 a window for people to find your more individualistic art than there used to be. Mm-hmm. It used to be only, you could only do movies through studios. And, you know, now there's so many more sort of media outlets. And right. The internet and streaming. And so, so just... Stand by your horses and do what you want to do. Life's too short, you know? There you go, butternuts. Yeah. But that guy, that universal guy, whatever his name was. Bob Simons. I don't think that guy is around in Hollywood anymore. The guy like, oh, all right, you can, you want to off the cuff the whole thing? Let's try that. <laughs> that that guy took a risk. He, he saw something in you. Yeah. That's over. It's all play it safe. It's all Avengers. It's all what's going to make money. Yeah, from what I heard, Dave Dave Chappelle was really fighting for me. He oh. he wanted me in the movie. And, well, there you go. And That's so feel pretty good. Yeah, so I was I was honored. I was it was great to work with Dave and Jim and all of them. You know, it was sure. really fun. Another guy, uh, so funny too. Guillermo, yeah, so, oh, yeah. yeah, he was great. Yeah, yeah oh he was God. such a sweet. I love that cool. guy. You're cool. Fuck you for that. Yeah, that That's, that's a, a famous iconic, line. Iconic. iconic scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. even Stephen Wright was in that fucking. Yeah. And Neil Brennan is the guy who throws the isn't he the guy who throws the hot dog at? Yeah, or? Neil Neil was the co writer. He co wrote yeah. the movie. That's right. With Dave, yeah. They were buddies. Damn. What what were like some of the worst movie experiences you had? <sighs> um worst. You were cut out of Schindler's list. <laughs> <I think I heard. laughs> yeah, but even though they cut me out, it was my best movie experience. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. happens. Bummer. Worst. Um I don't know, man. I, I got to say, it's such a privilege and an honor and a blessing to do a movie. I, I mean, there, there's moments in movies. Like, I did a movie called Superstar with Molly Shannon. Oh, where, I remember yeah. you're the guy you're yeah. the love interest. And I had, to, I had to stand at three in the morning. It's me on my motorcycle pulling up to her house in the rain. Mm. And they had a rain machine on me for four hours, you know. 
that's not fun. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you, you know, you just do these movies, and they're a real gift. Like they're they're she, so fun. She's so funny. I love her. Yeah, she's underrated awesome. as a comedic, uh, actor. <laughs> well, well, that movie, God bless her, was her first big starring movie. And on day one, she was so committed to you know, Mary Catherine Gallagher is such a physical yeah. character. And so on day one, she's just like going for it. And uh, excuse me. And um, her 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 first scene on day one was with Tom Green. Oh wow! And they're in a gym, and he pushes her into some chairs, and she like tumbles, yeah, and yeah. and she went into them so hard on day one of her own movie, she cracked like three of her ribs, Whoa. and she had to do the whole movie like in pain, and she still like destroyed it you know wow yeah, it was really she's awesome she's awesome she was she, great she should have been nominated for an oscar for that movie where she had cancer do you know the movie i'm talking about oh i think it's it's the one chris kelly from snl wrote but it's it's she's dying of cancer that's the movie and she's fucking incredible in it really she's a great dramatic actor dude <laughs> wow i'm not, I'm not it sounds like yeah. i'm making this up I sounds like no i'm making idea. a joke but I didn't uh, see that one sometimes people are so good at one thing that we don't accept them as another thing yeah you know or? Robin Williams pulled that off. Yeah, yeah he Whitford did. In it too, or is it me? Or Earl? I don't know. I never even heard of it. Someone, other yeah. people, I think. Maybe that sucks to be in a cancer movie and no one noticed. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. This oh, is there it, it is. Look at that. He's amazing in it, dude. Uh, dude, you just said Tom Green. You're in Freddy Got Fingered. That's right. Yeah, That's a, yeah. That you're in the grossest and funniest scene <laughs> yeah. where you get the nail through your knee and he starts licking it. No, I break my 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 leg bone on his skateboard ramp. Oh yeah, that's right. And then he started licking it and he improvised that. Ah, moment. yeah. I like how you won't do a drug movie, but go ahead and lick my yeah. open wound. Here. <laughs> lick my oh, femur, you man. Jeffrey Dahmer reject. <laughs> how do you not? Just break out laughing when you have a compound fracture that Tom Green starts licking. Because what's his face? <laughs> why? <laughs> this is why I didn't laugh. This guy. <laughs> is that Rip Torn? Yeah. Uh, Imagine throwing a skateboard at somebody. Uh. <laughs> he improvised that, uh. yeah. <laughs> but let's just say I don't think Rip was super thrilled being there. And I, I think him and Tom were sort of, I think there was a bit of friction. And you can feel it. He was sort of intense. So I I was just like, I'm just gonna do the, oh. like, because he's kind of an intense guy, and he's a he's an old pro, like he's a sure. seasoned dude, he's one of the pro. Best ever. And so I just sort of, I didn't dick around too much with that one. I just because he was he was in a right. <laughs> you mean mood. he didn't love being in a movie where <laughs> in the premises he fingered his son? <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> he, a seasoned pro didn't love that. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Why would he agree? Was it? I don't know. I think because Tom was so hot at the time. He was right. like Tom was the hot. Like you on the cover of Rolling Stone, wow. he was the hot commodity. So I think yeah. anybody who wanted to be around that heat, you know. Sure. So yeah. you I ever still like him. You ever see this Rip Torn uh, movie? I don't know if it really came out, but it was with Norman Mailer. It was like cocaine mid early seventies, mm -mm. and it was sort of the half documentary. One? I have seen this half doc not the therapy one. It's half documentary, half like scripted, <laughs> and then they have a fight. They get to a point where they're like, "We're gonna fight," and they fight. Oh. And it's not really scripted. Rip Torn pulls out a hammer and hits Norman Mailer over the head. And he's bleeding. For real? It's right here, yeah. Nice. Uh, Dude, he, there's a story back in he's the day. He's a fucking that, psycho. But also there's a story. All those dudes back then were psychos. Oh, there's yeah. A story like Dennis Hopper pulled a, pulled a knife on him at a dinner because I think he was supposed to do the Nicholson's role oh, in Easy yeah. Rider. And Rip Torn was like a military guy. He just like disarmed him and put him in like a fucking chokehold or something. Right, right. All the Walter Matthau was an Air Force pilot. There like, they're all wow. dudes. For, now you get actors at the red carpets wearing dresses. <laughs> <laughs> just so sad. It's come a long way. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> Can I play one second of this when he hits sure. him with the hammer yeah, on the yeah, head? Go for it. Okay. Is this just a coke fueled interaction here? Oh, jeez. Oh, I can't believe he took that. He's still standing. You're Norman, fast. Kingsley, 
You must die, not I Mailer. Fuck not me. Mailer. I don't want to kill Mailer, but I must kill Kingsley in this picture. Is that Rip? Yeah, it's Rip Torn in the shirt and Mailer. Wow, he's, he's biting his ear. He's, he's got the best of them, even with the other guy with the hammer. Good times. This is what you call toxic no, masculine. No, you trust me. I'm just I'm watching them, just thinking how fucking great he was in Larry Sanders. And, uh, I know. What's the other one uh, with Albert Brooks he's so great in? Oh, Defending uh, Your defending Life. Your life. Oh, oh, my God, he's so good. Yeah, wow. those guys were nuts. That's scary. That's not good. That reminds me of when I used to work for the police when I was just starting. I used to have to go down to the, the morgue, and they had on display a skull with a hole right in the top, and it was a perf. They had the hammer there was the murder weapon. The, the, the ha- I watched that, and I just the, the hammer went right through this guy's skull. Ooh. Yeah. You ever been to the Mooter Museum in Philly? No. What's have that? you been there? Oh, yeah. man. If you ever do a gig in Philly, take a day, go to the Muter, Muter Museum. I bet they have some great duct tape. Well, if you're going to Muter. <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying to figure that one out. Uh, that's good. I like it. Do I get a kadunk yeah, or what? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Um, I like I like okay. a joke wrapped in a riddle. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, or a joke wrapped in duct tape. Yeah, but, oh, um, power the Buddha Museum is just all skeletons, dead people, and how they died. Oh, so it'll yeah. be a, like a skull with a nail in it, and they go, yeah. oh, "This guy was caught fingering his sister, and his dad hit him with a nail gun." Oh and my it god! All has a story, and, and they have to agree to be in that museum. That's got to be pretty fucking embarrassing. Yeah, totally. There's one guy. He's like a dead body, but it's huge, and he died of obesity or whatever. And they have him oh, in a big god. like aquarium. You want you want to you want to visit Dad at the graveyard? No, the Muter Museum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's oh. all from like the 40s, the 30s, but they're all perfectly uh, kept. Oh. They have the crime. They have that serial killer museum in uh, L.A., the Death Museum. Oh, yeah, I went to that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was sort of a low-rent one, though. Yeah. Like, it's almost like they sort of put it up overnight. You know, they had some, like, cheesy stuff, and then you're out, you know? Like, yeah. They still had, like, TVs playing like vhs tapes on like tube tvs like you you could barely see it the line going through it was like yeah it wasn't very sophisticated like this is ted bundy's toothbrush you're like what does that mean yeah Yeah. did he kill somebody with the toothbrush yeah did it have black forest cheesecake in the the fibers no (laughs) i don't think so no it's amazing look at those chompers on jack i mean for a guy who eats a pound of black forest he's got some pearlies (laughs) yeah man I better take my diabetes medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, any movies on the horizon? Are you are you done with that chapter of your? Well, no. I like I said, I oh, ju- yeah. I'm kind of in a new chapter because uh, with Wingman, I actually wrote, directed, and starred in it. Wow! And it was one of the. It, it, it was so much work. Uh, it, it's really not easy to you know be the director and then jump in front of the camera sure. and. The focus you need, and uh, so that's my latest venture. And then I'm sort of starting to go down that path where I'm 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 writing more movies and want to direct them. And so I'm hoping Wingman uh, gets a good reaction, and I yeah. can I can jump to the next one that I, we've kind of got lined up in the chamber. Yeah. So did you? Yeah. Put, are your buddies in it? A lot of comedians in it. Uh, uh, Russell Peters is in it. Oh, nice. He's hilarious in it, and Jamie Kennedy from cool. Scream. He uh-huh. he plays yeah. the rival Wingman. Ooh. And, and Russell Peters plays the guy that hires Jamie. And so me and Jamie have this kind of rivalry. And the trademark of the wingman is we always have toothpicks. And I wrote a scene where me and, and Jamie Kennedy finally have a showdown in a bar. Uh-huh. And I shot it like a uh, Clint Eastwood spaghetti western where it's a show, there's a clock on the wall and we have a, a gunfight, but we, sh- we spit toothpicks at each other. Oh, fun. And it, it's all shot kind of close, like eye twitches and <laughs> weird lower angles. And so, yeah, he, he was great. So, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, we just finished the edit Ooh, literally Sunday. So wow. it's, it's not even out yet or anything. But Is it's it self-funded? No, we we actually had a studio hey. and some some grant money behind it, and um, so um, are you hoping for theaters or a streamer? What do you? We think? don't know yet because we, we just finished it, so now we have to put it on the marketplace. See if anyone, sure. if a studio likes it, great. That would be ideal with a. 
but um, probably in today's world and it being sort of a lower budget thing, my guess would be it would be a streaming movie, but who knows? Be better you never know. Anyway. You never know. I don't even know if they'll get anything. I don't even know if it's... Yeah. I've edited it, but I haven't watched it as one continuous movie yet. That's how freshly edited it is. So I still haven't seen it as one piece. So it might just fall apart and stink or it might be really good. I don't know, but that's kind of exciting. Have so. you ever written and directed a movie before? Yes, uh, but not f not with other people's money or f uh. or, or s with another studio. This is my first one doing it with someone else's um, you know resources. Any tips? Or we're right. We wrote a movie. Yeah. Now we're trying to pitch it. We don't know what. Oh, we, get, we, we just got tips. a producer involved. Yeah. We just got him on board. Hopefully. Yeah. Get get out and pitch it to whoever you can and and try and get funding with ours we got some government funding and then we also wow. got like private there's a lot of people out there with a lot of money who want to put money into really? into movies privately like part of our funding was like one guy put in a few hundred grand here another person put in 50 grand there like so if you can sort of find someone who's good at doing that you can actually end up pulling the pieces together so there's, there's many different ways to do it, but that's that's kind of what we did with Wingman. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. So congrats, man. No, thanks. Well, hopefully it it's, it comes out good. We'll see. You know hey. what? I, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. What I think is going to open the door for comedies again, like as you say, you know, like the the not safe comedies. Yeah. This uh, new South Park guys, they got a new movie coming out. Have you seen this? No. With Kendrick Lamar, Matt and Trey. Yes. Oh. Yeah, they got it. Have you heard about this? I heard about it. I haven't seen anything. It's about it's a it's a, like a musical about slavery with Kendrick Lamar. So you know they're gonna go for it, and uh, I think this is gonna break it all wide open. Good, it needs they to be. Good. Yeah, there they we go. just crush always. They're so good, man. Oh yeah, and, and they don't hold back. So oh yeah, look at that. So this is. I think this is gonna be a wild. Damn, did you comedy. hear his his fucking his uh, songs about Drake? They're crazy. Oh, oh, that's yeah. the guy that yeah. did them? Oh, okay. Oh, my God. No. He's like, not only are they like, the line's vicious, but they're so fucking catchy. Mm -hmm. Like, what's yeah. worse than being destroyed and also being like, I want to listen again? Yeah. Oh. I know. I know. You're getting zinged to a beat. Oh, re he's wow. really talented. It's he crazy. really is. Yeah, the BBL. Did you hear that one? Which one was that? Apparently BBL like Drizzy? Has a fake ass. He does? He got a bigger ass injected in. Oh, so I, I mean, who knows? Maybe See what I mean? We had Clint Eastwood, and now we got guys getting <laughs> fake asses. Like... Hey, what he's is a happened? Canadian. Yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> so you got had to get all like a, a backup duet woman to say, I mean it's this is high production. Drizzy is Drake. And BBL is oh. Brazilian butt lift. There you go. No way. <laughs> yeah. What you see how many burn. people are dying? I feel like there's like the number one cause of death for like a YouTube influencer. Oh, yeah. There's <laughs> a butt lift gone wrong. You know? I think you're right. That's, That's why they can't do butt. They can't do fucking law and order in the future. Uh, <laughs> another butt. Well, my bum, sister bum. got it done the traditional way. She got like, she wanted a facelift. She wanted like her cheek. So they took extra fat out of her butt uh, and put it in her face. And the only upside is I officially get to call her ass face now, which is a real <laughs> treat. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, that's the white woman's move. Is, is it fat out of the ass? Oh. I think the uh, others go fat in. Would you do it? Would you get a fat rump? No, I could use a little padding. I'm all bone. Really? You know, when I get pegged, it is not pretty. Yeah. Ouch. I know. It's a it's a lot of friction. You ever think about like getting around Thanksgiving, just getting two glazed hams and stuffing them down the back of your pants? That's not bad, but I feel like I'll just get fat. Why can't I just gain weight? Well, it'd be nice if you could put some glazed hams and then we get to enjoy the scent. That's true, but I think dogs will chase me. It's all right, as long as we get to enjoy your glazed pineapple right. ham well, scented he, ass cheeks. He's Jewish. So I don't know about the ham. I can do ham. Okay. Do I'm not that Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I can still enjoy food. All Wait, right. I thought you were Jewish. No, you wish. He's, what? He's, uh, a, he's an appropriator, this guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. what are you, Catholic? Uh, Agnost. Agnost what? Oh, oh, oh New Dick. York comedians. Yeah. <laughs> All New York comedians Autistic. seem kind of Jewish. <laughs> that's true. They that's what? True. They all do? All New York comedians seem kind of Jewish. Yeah, I thought you were. Uh, that's why you were mean to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, never. I'm circumcised. <laughs> How many times? I think they took a lot off. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the the Hebrew yeah. culture. Yeah. All, the, all my heroes are... 
feel like it's so Eames. it's like New York and like New York Jews just complain a lot, and I feel like that's just comedy. They do, yeah. It's right. Like like they, they start every sentence with like, "Can you believe this?" And that's like fucking comedy. You Did know, you yeah. notice what's Never the know. deal with? We literally have a segment called Peeves, Peeves. on this yep. pod. Oh. Do you have any pet peeves you want to share with us? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate when a girl comes to bed. With either wet hair mm. or track pants. Track pants. Yeah, like oh, it's Cause, like because they've been out in the pants. You mean? No, it's like if, if I want someone in tra- like I, I'm dating a girl, I don't want my cousin Ed coming to bed. Like <laughs> they're track pants. Like, like what? show me either come to bed nude or in lingerie, but I don't see. come to bed with like. Looks like you're about to get on the treadmill for an hour and then go eat a smoothie and what fart is, blueberries in the bathroom. Like, you know. like Run DMC, you're talking? Like a yeah, D-book? just track pants. Or what do they call Sweats. it? Sweatpants. Wet. Sweatpants. What's wrong with wet hair, though? Well, wet hair. You, you ever? You, I mean, would you ever go to bed with a wet towel laying beside you? I would not. Like you got a girl coming to bed, beautiful, long wet hair. It's swampy. It's wet. <laughs> Like, imagine, you know, she goes down there to give you a blowy, and it's like the girl from the ring is crawling up your lap. And it's like, you know, you put your head on it, it's like soggy, you pull your hand up, there's like sea urchins and... Yeah, it's like fucking, spaghetti or something. Right? Yeah, and it's I like... some bald women, dude. Bald with a Pisha. No, that would feel look like too much of a guy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you you don't mind? You like it when a girl no, comes to bed with wet, no, wet I hair? No, I I agreed with you. I right? Hate. What about you, wild thing? I never thought about it, but I it, coming to think of it, it right? It, it, the pill the pillow mildewy. Yeah, but doesn't it feel weird? You go over to make out, and it's like you're wrestling with Swamp Thing or something. Yeah, no, I yeah, hear you. You can just towel your hair a little bit. What's yeah? Go turn. Yeah, but it's still wet. Yeah. What about your what does your wife wear track pants to bed? No, no. Right? You wouldn't like that. Never thought about it. It's not yes, you have. <laughs> if she came to bed in sweatpants, uh, oh, I, I would on. I mean if we're going at it, they're coming off anyway. Yeah, but yeah. you just she's coming to bed. Like even if you're not going at it, just to even if you catch a glimpse, you go, Oh, that's a woman. I got a woman in my bed. You know? I see. Like nude or laundry, but Track pants and like a Vikings jersey. It's like, <laughs> yeah, come on, come to bed, Mel. You yeah. know, or whatever. You know, it's like you're in bed with Kevin point. Smith. Yeah, no, it makes a good point. I mean, like you want, you do want a woman. I, I, my girlfriend, she'll shower and just play like sports talk radio, and I'm like, what am I dating a fat contractor from Jersey? <laughs> oh, what is this? There you go. I, I get it. I get what yeah, you mean. You want the sexy. You don't yeah, want a I guy see. coming to bed. Yeah. All right, Mel, I catch you. Or I catch Ed you or Larry or, there. you know. It is funny when you when you do a gay example and, and the name you give. Is like, Mel. like you went right to Mel. Mel yeah. is so not the name yeah. you go to. Maybe. Shows that we're all a little gay. Carl. <laughs> we pick, Car, Carl's <laughs> Carl, a stronger Carl's name. Carl's a good name. I hear you, though. But and I think the same goes for us. They don't want us coming to bed in fucking uh, pigtails and a, and a later hosen. Whoa. Unless it's Oktoberfest season. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, hey, there's old Mel. There's your girlfriend, God. right? There. But have you had that where your your wife comes to bed like with track pants on, and you're just like disgusted? <laughs> See, I'd rather her wear track pants to bed than to church. But what about bed? Like, don't you want what? her to come to bed raw? I should wear a tuxedo as long as I'm uh, plowing tuxedo. her. Tuxedo. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit what she's wearing. You want to fuck Sinatra? But don't you get turned <laughs> off if she's not wearing something sexy? No, I can see through it. Dude, well, I'm, like, I'm not saying I want to get, get married where she's in a you know a sweat pant and a, and a wife beater. Lingerie does nothing for me. It's like what? it's like a it's, like almost, it's almost like hack. I feel like whoa, bro. Yeah, I don't need you. it. I don't need it, it yeah. from afar. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you're dating an Arab girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> um, um, but what about girls? That would get rid of the wet hair. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And the yeah. no track pants, just burka. <laughs> what about a girl sucking down oysters? That's a pet peeve. Oh, no, really? Like, I can't go on a date and some girl, like, pulls up a shell and sucks down sea mucus, and then I'm going to kiss that mouth? Well, you don't think uh, that means she might suck down other stuff? I don't want to watch that. Oysters look like they're all brown and green. They look like Shrek pinched a loaf on a shell, you know? 
<laughs> Come on. You, had, you don't like oysters? I've never had one, and I don't want to kiss a girl who's just had like eight of them and suck it. The way they, <laughs> the way they eat them, you, it's not like you're dainty with a knife and fork. You're like, you, you, <laughs> you're like sucking them off like a cement mixer that just ran through Stephen King's backyard barbecue. <laughs> you know, it's like, what the hell? Can we get Look at that. Adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Well, the guy who brings in uh, Mountain Dew is not going to be a fan of fine seafood <laughs> cuisine. I'll tell you well, that. Well, if you could shoot a girl after eating oysters, that's a different <laughs> proposal. But what? You don't mind a girl sucking well, an oyster? I, I, I like New an Orleans. oyster. I love an oyster. I like I oysters. Grew up on but it. I mean a girl doing it. Would you kiss her after that? Yeah. I'd kiss a girl after she blew me. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, guy. You would? I have. Yeah. And t- and I, I He's will. kissed a guy after he uh, Yeah. What in the name of Galapagos well, you, tortoise thunder juice? Are you one of these guys? I think that's Cameron's uh, liquid. <laughs> are you one of these guys who uh, makes the gal brush the teeth after? I say what? I say which? I say what? Hey, hey now? <laughs> you? I think he had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got There's a no canoe in the ahead. car. <laughs> 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 Wait, what did you say? Are you one of these? Some of the I knew a guy in college. He got blown, and she was like trying to make out with him. He's like, "Oh, you got to brush your teeth first. I ain't no gay." Oh wow! Well, you just don't really kiss with a girl after that moment happens. You go to sleep. Ah, uh, well, yeah. She wants to get plowed. Well, you can do that without kissing. I guess so. Yeah. All right. Some gals like a smooch. Yeah, but you're, they're not going to get it, are they? I guess not. You prude. <laughs> All right. The oyster, the oyster, the oyster beef is a weird one. Now, have you? I'm with you on the what? I'm fine. Well, what's a, t- a food that you're out on a hot date? Yeah. Some chick stuffs something in her mouth, and you don't want to kiss it. What is it? Another guy's penis. <laughs> Where are you going on a date? <laughs> Mel's house? Oh man! You never been to the Glory Hole? It's a great bar here. Mel's great Diner. <laughs> great oysters. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> all right. No, a, a lady could wolf down most things, and I would still... There's nothing. I... What about breath? Bad breath. That's, that's a tough beef. one. That's a tough one. You ever date a hot model, and they... They like no. They they, they <laughs> do that. They do that thing where they, they, they go on fasts, and then their insides start to eat their insides alive, and so now their breath smells like, like the carrion of a dead caribou from the side of a old Eskimo hunting trail or something. <laughs> like it's just like rotted meat stink because they're they're literally eating because their their stomachs, their enzymes are consuming their innards because there's no food coming in. Right. So they want to be skinny, but they don't realize their breath smells like the abominable snowman just ate a fucking corn on the cob at the back of a Koa campground outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh, I, just want to, I just want to let you go. Yeah. See what else comes out of that Good. soup cooler of yours. Jumping Jeremiah Johnson and his <laughs> jiggly bag of jumbo juice. <laughs> well, luckily there's a thing called a mint. You can pop that puppy in. Yeah, but you want to, in the middle of uh, sure, sure. coitus, you're going to say, hey, pop a, a Mrs. Butterworth's or whatever they're called. Well, you ever had a, a smelly uh, box? <laughs> Oh, now that we've talked about this, I feel like we're retreading a lot of shit here. Yeah. Bad breath. Yeah, I don't. I've never made out with my UPS driver. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Well, I'm a porch pirate, so I'll go down there. But wait a minute. What? You drink diet Mountain Dew? Not diet. Or regular drink Mountain Dew yeah. IPA and eat uh, pizza crust for right. dinner. You must have something going on in here. Yeah, heaven. Uh, Hello. It must be kicking up to the uh, esophagus. No, it's only when you starve yourself that uh, your 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 inner your inner stomach and all your muscles and everything starts consuming because they have nothing to feed off. So you know you know when people get lost, your your body starts eating the fat, right? Right. I get so it. So when you're a model and you don't eat for nine days and you're purging in between, you're starting to your your own body's eating itself, and then you smell like. Uh, Luke Skywalker just took a Dutch steamer in the back of an IHOP and the janitor swirled it around with this dirty, greasy mop. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, boy, you at the old folks home is going to be quite <laughs> a be sight. Good. Yeah. It's going to be good. Can't wait for that. All right, well, shit. <laughs> now, now, who are these models you're plowing? Well, the same ones you did. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I mean, just, you know, you every, during your life, you'll date a few models, right? Did you Plus ever date size. models? 
plus size model. Oh yeah. Well, they don't have any problem eating themselves oh, alive. Oh no, no, they. God, it's like the opposite. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, you make out with them, it smells like a twenty-four hour Golden Corral buffet in your oh, face. Oh yeah, it's like the Keebler Elf tree. <laughs> good lord. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I got a good lord. You've been ranting on about <laughs> yeah. Yeah. who knows what. Yeah, innards. it's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what about outards? You never about outards. What? You, what's that? This. The outside. There's oh. Innards. There's outers. What about it? Just say so you don't hear about outers. What do you mean? Well, you hear about innards all the time. Innards. The innards. You don't really hear about outers. Well, give me an example of an outer. This is an outer. Oh, like body. your outer body. Yeah. What about it? Well, no one calls it an outered. Oh, they do to the belly button. Audi. Audi. Great car. Indian Audi. Yeah. By the way, I saw a homeless guy today so drunk. He was bent over a log trying to shit out of his belly button. <laughs> he was so drunk he forgot which was which. Well, you gotta you gotta write fables. I think that would really be children's something. books. I see. Think I, see I haven't. <laughs> I actually have written children's books. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I got nine of them. Pull them up. Oh, here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Well, what are they called? I was looking for your dating history. I couldn't find it. Oh. Yeah, no. But I did just find out your cousin is in Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're good. That's my deep research for the day. She's never yep. been in a bare naked lady. Not if she's in sweats. Yeah. Damn those sweats. Unbelievable. Or track pants. As you track know. pants. So you don't call them that here? Track pants to me are like athletic y parachute pants. Oh. When I grew up, they were just like what you, sweats. Yeah, sweats. Yeah. Track pants. No, I'm with you. I prefer like up to here, like, you know. That's nice. Dressed down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if it's cold? Yeah, well, you're getting under the sheet, yeah. so you keep <laughs> them right. warm, right? You're in the clan. <laughs> Whoa, lemon juice from Larry's Hideaway. <laughs> uh, Mark, you have any peeves left over? Uh, oh, I got a couple. Uh, how about this pee? Oh. You missed some, some gold earlier before you showed up. We, oh. we rocked a few, but uh, I got one in the chamber for you there, HW. Okay. Do we need some toilet paper? <laughs> you might oh. after that uh, IPA. Um, you know when you're... Purchasing something with a credit card online, and you yeah. put the credit card number, you put the date, you put the the secret code on the back, and then they go, what country? You know, you go, New York, New York, country. And they put United States under the U. So I'm yeah. scrolling for half an hour. All the way. Sudan, Tunisia, yeah. Turkey. I'm like, just put America. Put America. Right. Get us up top. But what if people perceive it as South America? Uh, or North America, because there's several Americas. That's a good point. So they have to do United well, States of America. Can we do a little geo tracking? We have the technology to put a credit card through the internet. How about the technology to know I'm in the U.S. and then put that on top? You just I'm gotta, with you. Just you just got to type U. You just got to uh, open it and type U, and you're good. Oh, really? Because I do the same thing. I go all the way to, and sometimes you're in a rush. Yeah. Because you get one of those things. This transaction will expire in two yes, minutes, and yes. you're like, I got to get this flight to Dubai to the Caramel Corn Festival or whatever you do. <laughs> I got to get this assault rifle to the West Village. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah, the it's yeah. ping pong time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's uh, a peeve. Is that scroll? Yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. Thank Thank you. Like, Scrolling can go to hell. Well, you're Canada sometimes, so you got yeah. a little C. C's pretty high up. Yeah, but I mean, we just, but the, we're re re referencing the United you're States right. specifically, and I'm with you, guy. Thank you, sir. Are you, are you on the road right now, Harlan? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm touring. I'm going to uh, be in uh, Vegas. At, hell yeah. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, I'm going up to St. Catharines, Canada. I'm going to be in Vegas. Nice. Uh, Phoenix, uh, the comedy festival in Pittsburgh. Ooh. And, yeah. All right, hey, that's a hot photo there. That guy's fucked a few models. Yeah, there you go. That was at Skank Fest last summer. Oh, wow. You look yeah. thrilled about those crowds. Yeah. Yeah, I had three or four people there. <laughs> HarlanWilliams.com? HarlanWilliams.com, that's right. And then... Uh, and the new movie? The new movie, Wingman. We don't know when it'll be out, so I appreciate you letting me talk about it. It was fun, Wingman. And you have a pod, too, right? Podcast, the Harlan Highway Podcast. Killer pod. You were just on it. Had a it blast. came out to this morning, actually. Oh, so did yeah. he. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> and uh, you've got to come on it when you're I'd in in, to, in Los Angeles. Just but, to see the house alone is worth doing it, but it's a great oh, yeah. pod. But uh, yeah, we had a we had a right. Thanks again for doing it, man. I'm, it was I'm a, glad. I'm it was honored. A royal, royal blast. And yeah. that producer you got is a real kitten. Yeah, yeah, she's great, and just it was. A, so the podcast is a ton of fun, and uh, yeah, check it out. Hell yeah, Hell love he's... love Harlan. Check out Harlan Kill Tony, by the way. If you haven't seen it, it's one of the funniest things I've seen in a while. Oh, thanks, man. Killed it. 
Oh, thanks. Yeah, there's a new one coming out with me in like two or three weeks, oh, I think. Oh, great. We did it live at the Forum in L.A. Whoa. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Me and David Lucas have a pretty wicked roast battle in oh, the boy. upcoming one. So. Easy. Don't start a race war. Yeah. Although he's never had a race. He doesn't even have track pants. <laughs> so these are some Mark dates here. All right. And, and follow, check these out on punchup.live slash Mark Norman. And, and mine are punchup.live slash Samuel. Follow us on Punch Up, guys. Yeah, I don't know when this comes out, so I'm scared to say some dates. Do 614. 614. I'm in Philadelphia, the Miller Theater, then Hampton Bay, New York. That's the Hamptons. Red Bank, New Jersey, Poughkeepsie, Inglewood, West Palm, Fort Myers, New Haven, Boston. Wow. All kinds of stuff. All right. Pittsburgh, Spokane. You're all Baton over. Rouge. Yeah. Oh, way to go, dude. We have Home some. state. And what do you got there, Sammy Davis? We got uh, Atla- Brea, California. Oh, no, it's after Brea. Atlantic City with Chris Stefano. We're doing that together. Rochester, ooh, New ooh, York. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Miami, uh, Baltimore area. Then we got a Euro Tour, London, Belfast, Dublin, Paris, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, <laughs> Oslo, Stockholm, yeah. punchup.live slash Sam Morell. And uh, Bodega Cat should be legal by now. Should be at the Comedy Cellar. We love you for drinking this shit. Uh, should be at a, a, a ton of venues in New York right now. So what is it? Whiskey? It's our whiskey. Yeah, the rye. How long have you been making that? It's been a couple years now. Wow. Oh, that's good. Where does it? Where do they brew it? Uh, like Indiana. Jersey, Indiana. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wicked. Right. Uh, it sells out of Jersey. Wow. I think. Yeah, we're, we're uh, yeah, that's where all the bottles. What's it called? Bodega Cat. Wow, so it's like kind of like all these guys doing their own tequila, but you're doing whiskey. Exactly. Oh, cool. We zig, we zag. Wow. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Harlan, check out his uh, his podcast. See Harlan on the road. Uh, thank thank you. you for listening. See you next week. Hell yeah, comedy. Thanks, guys. Sunday's the day for my next bender. A bit of Pivarecki, know the future's close. I've had a little too much bourbon, and Norman's talking shit about the Like I remember her And I get down in the same way